Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the incremental refresh detect data changes option. Stay tuned. Okay, incremental refresh. It's been out for a bit. It's still in preview. I know, I know, I know. And it does require premium capacity, but, but, Lots of people are using it and I'm having lots of discussions about it. And I've been getting this one specific question about this detect data changes option. Like Patrick, what is it? How does it work? Should we use it? Should I not use it? I'm like, of course you should use it, especially if you have a lot of data or you want to speed up those refreshes. Okay. And so all these questions were just coming left and right. So I decided, you know what, instead of me talking, instead of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Okay. The first thing you want to do is get incremental refresh configured. If you've never configured it, go and watch the video that Adam and Christian did or the video that I did and we'll walk you through the steps to get it configured. Once you get it configured, you go here, you go to incremental refresh and you set up, you know, this is the normal configuration and we'll walk through that in the video, but you'll have this option called detect detect data changes. Check the box, check that box. Um, and when you check that box, it's going to populate this drop down with every date in the database in, in the table. Okay. Not the database, the table. And so you need to be careful because you should choose the column. You should not choose the column that you use when you configure an incremental refresh over in the query editor, when you set up the filters and all that stuff, don't choose that column. You should choose a column. It's typically an audit column. So anytime a row is inserted, that column, it's a date time column. And it, it contains the date and time that that row was inserted or anytime a date, uh, a row was updated, it contains the, it will be updated with the date and time that that row was updated, right? Kind of like an audit column. So what I did on the AdventureWorks database is I added a column name last update time. It's a that date, it's a date time column, okay? And so um, you would select that column and then click apply and then publish. You publish the report up to the Power BI, Power BI service. Once it's published, you go out to the service and configure your data sources and everything like that. And you can schedule a refresh or you can click refresh now. So I click refresh now. The very first time you click refresh now, what's gonna happen is you will see, I'm using Azure Data Studio and I install the profile extension so I can monitor all the queries that's coming through. Um, and so what you'll see is the very first time you run this, you're gonna see, so if you go back to mine, something I forgot to mention, if you go back here, you'll notice that I use months instead of years. And I did that because if data changes in 2018, it's going to refresh the entire 2018. Okay. That's not what I want. Cause that could be billions of rows of data. I want to minimize the amount of data that I'm reaching and pulling back from the database. So that'll reduce the time and reduce the amount of memory that I need to refresh my model. So I, instead of using years as my time period, I use my month. So instead of going after a year, it'll go after a month and only pull back the data I need, reduce the amount of time it needs to pull that data and reduce the amount of memory it's need to refresh my model. Okay. So that's what I did. And so once you do that, you'll see in data studio, when you run the initial one for me, I have 24 months, so it's going to run 48 queries. You can see right here, right? I'm, I'm showing 48 events happen. So the first set of queries, it's running these, this max update time. So you can see if I click here, it says select max last update time. So it's going to go out and grab the max update time for each one of my time periods for each one of my partitions. Okay. And hang on to them. Okay. And then once that's done, it's going to go and actually run a query for each one of my partitions to pull the data in, cache it into memory, load it into my model. Okay. So you'll see 48 queries. If you did 36, right. Multiply that by two, you'll see 72. All right. And on and on and so forth, whatever your configuration is, you'll see that number of queries. Okay. So now the first run, you'll see 48, I'll, I, all 48 of those ran. I have all my max update times and I have all my data there. So what happens if I go to management studio and I wrote a query that inserts new data into AdventureWorks and then I update a couple of rows in AdventureWorks. What'll happen? So when I go to, you know, Power BI, I refresh that data set or it's scheduled to refresh. If I'm looking at my Azure Data Studio, go to Azure Data Studio, and I had a trace running when this happened, 
And so you'll see 26 queries came through. So basically what it does is it runs those 24 queries to grab the last update time for each one of those partitions, compares it to the previous run. If any of them are greater than um, the max update time from the previous run, it will run a refresh for that partition. And so I inserted data for 2019 and an updated data for 2018. And you can see, here's my queries. And these queries, this where clause is based on the, um, the how I configured the filter for incremental refresh. And you can see it saying, here's my the data I inserted it, that I updated in 2018. And here's the data I inserted in 2019. So it just will run just queries for those months. So it'll determine that based on those last update times. Make sense? All right. So what happens? Let's take it a, a step further. What happens if I just decide, decide to blah, blah. what happens if I decide to run this delete operation, right? This DML, this data manipulation, whatever I say, delete a row in the data warehouse, right? Or in the database, whatever my source is. It won't do anything because the last update time is not greater than the last update time from the previous run because nothing actually changed. And so you have to adopt a different pattern for this. So what you would do is instead of doing this hard delete, you would do what I like to call a soft delete, right? And so I, I added a column called is deleted. It's a bit column, zero if the row is not deleted, one if the row is deleted. So by default, it's all zero. And then when a row is deleted, what I'll do is, you can look at this update statement right here. I set that the value of that column to one and I update my last update time column. And that'll trigger that partition to update. In this case, right, I'm looking at November 2018. So when I update this and then I go out to Power BI and I click refresh now, then I go back to Azure Data Studio, right? I'll go back to Azure Data Studio and you can see it runs all 24 and it's comparing, it's comparing those last update times for each partition. You can see I have 25 queries because I only did a delete on one of them and you can see it's only refreshing the partition for November 2018. In addition to that, I also went into the query editor and I filtered out all, I select filter, give me only the columns where it is deleted is zero, okay? So it physically, when it refreshes it, it physically removes that, those rows that are is deleted from the model also, saving me saving me even more memory, all right? What do you guys think? I know, I know, it's bananas, it handles all this for you. You don't have to write a whole bunch of, you know, code for sliding partitions, merging, par merging partitions, merging, merging partitions, it just handles it for you. This is great, this is phenomenal. Okay, I know that's a lot of information that I just hit you guys with. So what I did, I did you a huge favor. I wrote a lot, down in the comments below, I provide you with a little cheat sheet that has about six, five or six steps to help you get this set up, configured and deployed in your environment. What? Yeah, I did that for you. Check the comments below. Okay, what do you guys think? You got any questions, comments? You know what to do. Post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.